These are some old pictures I have from the 1936 turkey trot. This is Frances Hamilton, who was Sultana. And funny enough, this is my mother, who was the Duchess of Westoff. And what's interesting here is these gals are holding turkeys, which is kind of fun, but that would have been the court in 1936. And then a shot of the actual pageant, because they, of the coronation, the staging was all, you know, very uh, Turkish. This is a picture, I'm assuming it was the prince and princess of the 1960 turkey trot. This is Fane MacDougall and it was Ronnie Bowman. This is a fun picture. This goes back, well, 1947. It says the feather style show for the turkey trot in 1947. And all of these gals are all wearing dresses made out of turkey feathers. Okay, this would be 1960, and this is a photograph, I'm guessing, of the Sultan and Sultana with the little coronation dancers, and I'm, in one, I'm one of these girls. Just another example of one of the floats, and you can see the, the kids on the float are all in kind of Turkish-type costume. It, everything was very colorful and and very professionally done. And just this is the 1972 coronation program and you can see the effort that went into it by many many people in this town. And then this is the actual you know photograph that we had of, of me in my costume. You just dressed up, you went to the parade, you went to the junior coronation, you went to the ball, you greeted people, you uh, shook hands with the governor. Something only happens once in a lifetime. People from all over came. Had a good turnout. I mean, it feels pretty good because uh, here you're all sitting up on the throne in the, in the coronation. All those beautiful 18-year-old girls da dancing for, for, you, for, for you and for the crowd, of course. Uh, it's, it's an exhilarating performance. Uh, the year I was uh, Sultan <laughs> was back in 1938, and I was a senior in, in college at that time. We're a turkey trot. Uh, therefore, the people who rule theoretically over the turkey trot are Turks, so they are going to be sultans and sultanas. And so some idiot thought of uh, spelling turkey backwards and quarrel backwards. The Sultan's name was Turkey spelled backwards, which is Yekret, and uh, <coughs> the Sultana's name was uh, Quero spelled backwards. Sultana Orek the 14th. I don't know. It's Quero spelled backwards. I, I don't know, some enterprising lady had the idea of tying into Turkish motif, and uh, that's where it developed. It was an upper echelon type of thing. And kind of creative for a little small South Texas town to go Persian. I think it started by 1912, but some man from New York who used to come down and buy turkey feathers for hat, ladies' hats, so, saw all those turkeys. He, he's the one said, hey, why don't y'all do something with that? It was November of 1912. An estimated 30,000 people flocked to town to see the world's first turkey trot with about 18,000 turkeys leading the parade. It was such a big deal that Texas Governor Colquitt attended and an invitation was issued to President Woodrow Wilson. It was routine for Quaroites to see Thanksgiving birds herded into town each November, but it was quite the spectacle for out-of-towners vacationing in the area. Sensing a chance for a little fame and fun, local newspaper editor of the time, J.C. Howerton, helped to start the festival, which took the name of a popular dance craze of the time. When it was started, it all for range turkeys, for people that grow a few, they'd get together and the neighbors would get together and they'd all drive them into town. They didn't have trucks large enough to carry those turkeys. And the buyers would come in from up east and uh, just walk out among the turkeys and they'd say, I'll take this flock or this flock. And uh, we had a turkey processing plant here at one time that uh, would process the turkeys and pack them in ice and put them on rail cars and ship them all over the United States. It got to be quite a thing 
with people, an unusual thing, people gathering turkeys up like you gather cattle up. That's what apparently motivated the perception of getting a turkey fest together, the festivities of the growing and delivering of the turkeys at market time. And they used to run special trains out of San Antonio down here for that. And though the turkey drives occurred on an annual basis, the fest itself was too expensive to be a yearly affair. Lavish costumes, elegant sultan's balls, and hosting the out-of-towners took a financial toll on the turkey trot's backers. With the exception of the 1930s, where trots rolled every two years in an effort to help morale during the Great Depression, it usually took a few years for people to forget how hard it was to host a turkey trot. And then, the town got anxious for another party. The royalty was selected from Quirrell's elite, Sultans were men of high distinction and success, and tradition held that the sultanas were college-aged women of local pedigree. The royals ruled the fictional land of Turkeydom, which featured a coronation unlike any that Texas had ever seen. And a secret society that selected the sultan and sultana kept their identity a secret until the moment that they walked out. It added a little bit more to it not to know who was going to be the sultan until, or the sultana, until the, uh, that night. It was a big surprise to the crowd. We wore our fancy uh, costumes. We paraded forth and uh, uh, ascended to the throne. We come in right at the last minute, we leave before everybody else too. It's nice to think that someone People think enough of you to select you to you represent them in their festival. What you know? What is representing our our city? A lot of people think that the uh, the turkey fest is the turkey trot, uh, the turkey race. You know, that's a big attraction, but it isn't the turkey trot. It's a different a different atmosphere of, of putting together a turkey trot and a turkey fest. They raised a turkey finally that was a broad-breasted turkey. Good to eat, but couldn't march. Do you tell you this? Sad. That's one thing that caused the demise, I think, of the turkey trot. When they started breeding the turkeys to uh, to be heavier and standing them in uh, turkey houses and, and just feeding them, uh, so you get a quick gain on them and everything. And they uh, they didn't have the leg strength that they because uh, they never went anywhere. They just went from they just ate and stayed in these turkey houses in small pens. And when you put them out on a hot street and tried to march them, they they, they really couldn't go. Bring it back a lot of memories. But it was a, uh, it was, it was really something for this community. It would be nice if we could have another turkey trot and let the people see what, what we used to have back in those days. It was something else. Great days. Uh, always quite a quite a uh, nice, sophisticated town. A lot, as I said, a lot of history and a lot of uh, a lot of pride. And we'll gobble and we'll 
strut and then we'll turn right round. 